Welcome to Shraf's technical series. In this video, we are going to discuss Shraf's boost based, boost beast based web socket server. So, this web socket server is based on multi chart application developed by uh, Vinnie Falco and I also was presented at the CppCon 2018. So, it is based on uh, boost beast and it is a multi threaded uh, chat application based on web sockets. So, in this video, we are going to discuss the changes that were made on top of that example. And uh, in this demo, we are going to show this multi chat application was enhanced so that it streams stock quotes over WebSocket server to the web browsers. So, first, a quick demo. We developed an application in the previous videos where we get uh, the code stream from the third party vendor over web sockets and we publish them to a Redis topic. So that application is running now and these are the code stream for Bitcoin USD. We see it on a Redis topic. So in this video, we are going to use this as a source and publish these codes which are pushed to a Redis topic to the clients over web sockets using the web socket server we are going to discuss now. So, before that, a quick demo. I have a sample WebSocket client which is running here. So, if I open connection to that, I get all the stock codes for Bitcoin USD published here. So, if I close the connection, clear it, it stops, then I can open it again and I should see the code stream. So, the boost beast based web socket server is sending the code streams from this Redis topic to the web socket client over web sockets. So, now we will go through the code and before that we will go through the thread model. The original code had IO context. We enhanced this uh, example to use two more contexts. So, the original IO context would listen to the port and manage the web sockets. Then we added two more uh, IO contexts, the subscriber and the publisher context. The subscriber context would listen to the Redis subscriber and then send us the, listens to the Redis topic and then send the codes to the, on a single producer single queue to web socket publisher. The web socket publisher will take the code from the Redis subscriber and then uses the shared state to get all the symbols that uh, the Redis subscriber is subscribed to and then will check which web socket is interested in a particular symbol and then pushes the code to only those web sockets. So that way if I am interested in only Bitcoin USD, I will get codes for only Bitcoin USD. And if somebody else is interested in Ethereum USD, they get codes for the Ethereum USD only. So the original example was multi-chart, so when, which is uh, broadcast based. So if uh, a client sends a message, everybody else would get it. But this in this example, we made it unique. So only those, so a WebSocket would get only what the WebSocket has subscribed for. And then it's a shared state which is uh, shared by all the IO contexts. And um, we left the number of threads to 5 for the main IO context. There are 5 threads listening and managing the WebSockets. We have 1 thread for Redis subscriber and 1 thread for Redis publisher. And uh, we, the shared state will manage uh, an unordered pair of uh, smart pointer, unordered pair of uh, shade pointer of uh, web socket and uh, unordered dictionary of uh, symbols. And each symbol will have a list of web sockets it's managing. So this is also an unordered uh, uh, map of uh, shade pointers of uh, web sockets. Similarly, the shade state will also manage all the sessions they are in the whole program. So, we will go through these details later on, but uh, for now that is the high level uh, um, architecture of the application. 
So let us switch to the Visual Studio Code and go through the code. So we have the main.cpp, main.cpp. The original example had only a single IO context. We added two more IO contexts. Now you might wonder why we need two more IO contexts. Why couldn't we use the existing IO context? If you look at uh, the architecture, we have three long running background proxies. This is long running. Redis subscriber is long running. WebSocket publisher is long running. So if you use a single IO context and send these three long running tasks to the IO context, IO context could take any of these three in any order. So if you use the same IO context, chances are that IO context, all the threads will be blocked in this and none of the threads would go to the other two long running tasks. So if you have multiple long running tasks, it's best to have an IO context for its own so that the none of the background process star for uh, threads. So once we have the three IO contexts, we pass the shared state to all three IO contexts and then we start the, then we'll uh, send the method that should run on the IO context and then signal handler. Then we create threads for each IO context and each thread would be running that IO context. In this case, we we take a parameter of five threads and all the five threads are running the main loop where they listen to the socket, accept the web socket, uh, accept the connection on the socket, create a web socket, etc., which is already in the original example. And we create one thread for the Redis subscriber and one thread for the web socket publisher. And then we join the threads. So you could go through, I'm going through these, this code base very quickly because we already discussed these in the previous sessions. Now we'll go through the main IO context, listener.run. The listener.run would start on accept loop and on accept will wait for a connection on the, on the system socket. Once it gets a connection on the system socket, it runs on accept in a loop. If there is a connection, we create a create HTTP session on a strand. A strand will ensure a function would run only on a single thread at a time. So that ensures synchronization when there are multiple threads. So you move that socket to that uh, HTTP session class and then do run on that HTTP session. So we didn't make any changes to this uh, class. It's same as the original example. Since we are dealing with web sockets, not a REST API, the code is uh, the same. Once on the web socket message parser, you get web socket is upgrade message. You know that this HTTP session is for a web socket. And then you hand over the connection to a WebSocket session. So that way you segue into WebSocket world. And if it is not, then it is processed by the HTTP session. Since this example is all about WebSockets, we'll segue into WebSocket session and skip the HTTP session class. And in the WebSocket session, you do on accept. Then it's the same thing, you create a strand no, you do WebSocket async read. Uh, no strand is involved here. You do a WebSocket async read. And then you create on read. And then on read goes into a loop. So it's a long running process. So once you keep reading it, you consume the buffer. So you empty the buffer. So this was these were discussed in the previous sessions. Now, what we're doing here is we're just reading in a continuous loop, but we haven't implemented the logic where we would parse the message on the WebSocket. So that we'll do it at a later session. So right now, we just keep reading it in a loop, but we're not doing anything 
on that uh, for that message we read from the WebSocket. So in the later sessions when we enhance this uh, WebSocket session, we'll discuss the rest of the methods. So for now, we'll skip what we're doing on the message we get from the WebSocket. Let's go to the Redis subscriber. So the Redis subscriber, if you go back to the architecture diagram, the main starts the IO context for the subscriber. And then you have the subscriber, which does the subscribe. And we have discussed this in a previous session already. So it will use uh, Redis plus plus Redis client. And then it will subscribe to messages. And on message, it will send the message to single producer, single consumer queue. So you have a Redis subscriber which has a single producer, single consumer queue. So this subscriber would send the socket uh, Redis message received on the Redis topic to the WebSocket publisher. Now the WebSocket publisher would listen to that single producer, single consumer queue, pop the message, and then it will go through all the sessions that are in the shared state. So we have shared state sessions. So this is the same as the original example. So it goes through all the sessions in the shared state, which is all the web so sockets, and it is right now broadcasting to all the web socket sessions. So to do that, uh, they, it is in a smart way. So it's also in the original example. It gets the, it takes the mutex on the shared state because it's a shared state. You need a mutex because when you're getting all the web sockets off of the sessions, another, another dictionary, if somebody connects at the same time, the other threads might be updating this, one, this session list with new web sockets. So we want to avoid that uh, collision when somebody is writing and you're reading at the same time. So we have to open a mutex here. And then once you get the weak pointer list of all the sessions in your uh, vector, a vector of weak pointers of WebSocket sessions, then you make your uh, local copy of uh, weak pointers of WebSocket sessions. Then we close this mutex and then we send to all those WebSockets by grabbing the strong pointer, by taking a weak pointer dot long, uh, weak pointer dot clock, we get the strong pointer, and then on that pointer we do the send. So weak pointer dot lock would fail if the WebSocket is already released. So when you release a WebSocket, the the shade pointer of that uh, web socket will return null because it's already released. So this way, when you're running in this loop, if there are some web sockets which are closing connections, we won't get an exception here. So once you get your smart pointer, uh, strong pointers to the weak pointers, this is a pointer to the web socket. You call the send on that web socket. So if you see here, SP is weak pointer link and weak pointer is a vector. Vector is a vector is a shade state sessions. Shade state sessions is nothing but an another dictionary of uh, WebSocket session smart pointer. So once you get to the web session dot cpp, you do on set and then you send the message to all the web sockets. So this is the original code, nothing has been changed here. So that's how you get the messages on the individual web socket, like it's being done here. So we close it, open, and then we get the messages like this. So that's all for now. We'll discuss the, once we make further changes to this example, We'll discuss the, the changes in the next video session. Thank you for watching.